This video will discuss the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the moment of inertia matrix. So I have my moment of inertia tensor or matrix, whichever you prefer to call it, and it has the nine entries, which we've uh, defined how to compute those in the previous video. And as I said, that forms a symmetric real three by three matrix called the moment of inertia tensor. And since it is symmetric and real and having three dimensions, that means we are going to have three eigenvalues, which are also real, meaning that they have no imaginary component. And those eigenvalues of this tensor are the rotational constants. So you may remember this from studying the rigid rotor system in quantum chemistry or quantum mechanics. Um, in the rigid rotor system, you have a value B, which defines uh, what some of the quantum numbers and the allowed energy states can be in that system. And these are where those values come from. Those values are uh, the eigenvalues of this moment of inertia tensor. Okay, so we have uh, three values, as I said. Um, typically, what we're going to have in the way that we compute them, as I've defined in my previous programs and videos. It's in units of AMU angstrom squared. That's not a very convenient unit for typical kinds of spectroscopic measurements. So what we're going to do is convert to megahertz or wave numbers, inverse centimeters, which are convenient units for uh, spectroscopic measurements of rotational spectra. So these values are typically defined, these eigenvalues, I can call them I, IA, IB, IC, in terms of a typical uh, moment of inertia tensor. And I have the restriction that IA is less than or equal to IB, which is less than or equal to IC. And then I can sort these into values called A, B, and C, where A is greater than or equal to B, which is greater than or equal to C, where this B is the B from the rigid rotor model system, which is typically the middle eigenvalue. Okay, so how do we get those values? So we have A equals Planck's constant over eight pi squared, eight pi squared times IA, B, same thing for IB, 8 pi squared IB, C, H over 8 pi squared IC. And if you're confused or want any more information about where these values come from in terms of Planck's constant over 8 pi squared, uh, you can look in the rigid rotor chapter of the quantum chemistry playlist. Okay, so we've got these three rotational constants now for our given molecule. So what are some cases or what is the val what are the relative values of these uh, constants tell us about the structure of the molecule? So we have some cases. Uh, specific cases we can have is A not equal to B not equal to C. And that would be a situation called an asymmetric top. And if you've went to the, if you've uh, followed the symmetry and group theory chapter of the quantum chemistry playlist, that would mean that it has to have an abelian point group if it's an asymmetric top, if that means anything to you. Okay, if we have A equals B equals C equals zero, if all of the rotational constants are zero, uh, that means it's just an atom, you're monatomic, because it's impossible for them to all be zero unless all the atoms weigh zero, or there's only one atom which is at the center of mass. So that would be the case if it was monatomic. If we have A equals B and C equals zero, only one of them is zero and two of them are equal, then that's the case for a linear molecule. So from symmetry and group theory, that would be point groups like C infinity V or D infinity H. 
So that's why in rigid rotor, when we study diatomic molecules, those are linear by require by definition. So we're using that B eigenvalue, the B rotational constant, because it's A and B are both the same and C is zero. Okay, other cases we can have, we can have A equals B is not equal to C, or A is not equal to B, which is equal to C, and none of them are equal to zero, so not equal to zero as well. That is a situation called a symmetric top. And those are point groups which are non-abelian. Things like C3V, C5V, D3H, D6H, etc. So those are things where two of the rotational constants are the same, and one of them is different, but none of them are zero. All right, we can have uh, a final case here where A equals B equals C and none of them are equal to zero and that is called a spherical top and those would be point groups which are called cubic point groups things like tetrahedra or methane um, octahedra something like FF6 or icosahedra things like buckyballs C60 Okay, so those are the different cases that we have there. So for cases where we have an asymmetric top, so an asymmetric top, if we take our moment of inertia tensor, that defines a unique orientation of the molecule. So we can actually translate to the center of mass and rotate our molecule such that the moment of inertia tensor is diagonal and that will give us a unique orientation for an asymmetric top molecule because all these rotational constants not being equal we can get a unique orientation based on this and we've removed uh, from the center of mass the redundant translations and from the moment of inertia tensor the redundant uh, rotations if we have if we have other uh, cases so if we have symmetric or spherical tops, it does not define it uniquely. So you'd need some other criterion in order to specify a unique molecular structure to compare, for example, if two molecules are the same or not just based off of their Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so as I said, and as we demonstrated in the uh, in the geometry analysis program I've been building in the previous video, we can translate to not to the geometry. We can translate to center of mass to remove redundant translations. Then we can rotate to what are called the principal axes. Principal axes are is the orientation in which the moment of inertia tensor is diagonal. So the eigenvectors of the moment of inertia tensor when it's diagonal are just the unit vectors, Cartesian unit vectors. And in that case, we would have a unique orientation and we have removed the redundant degrees of freedom if you've got an asymmetric top or you are linear or monatomic we'd have to do more work for symmetric and spherical tops. Okay, so let's demo what I'm discussing here. So in Avogadro, I've got the XYZ uh, structure of, let's see, dimethyl ether. So I got a meth methyl, methyl, water in the middle, six hydrogens, two carbons, and an oxygen. Then I've got that structure in Jupiter here. Those are the coordinates from what I just showed you. And I have my geometry analysis program, which is the moment of inertia program from the previous video, added in with the functionality I described in, in this video thus far. And now this is going to be complete according to the notes that I started writing these from on the first video. So these notes come from uh, C. David Sherrill at Georgia Institute of Technology. And I've been working through these various um, parts of this program to, sh to uh, get 
to the program that we have now. So the final result, so I added a header that just says what this program is and what it does, my name and when I wrote it. Let's see, um, some more things about the threshold for defining when these things are equal. Um, as you saw, these things have to be equal or not equal in order to fall into these various classes. And there is some numerical error in, in the fact that we represent these as incomplete floating point numbers. The fact that we have to, you know, specify them incompletely like this. So I need some, I need some threshold, some criterion for what qualifies as being the same or not the same. I have Planck's constant, Avogadro's number, speed of light, etc. Everything else seems to be the same thus far. Scrolling down. Okay, print uh, the principal moments, the eigenvalues of the moment of inertia tensor. What type the molecule is. I've determined uh, spherical top, symmetric, asymmetric, etc. Printing the rotational frequencies in megahertz and in wave numbers. Uh, criterion for whether the values are the same or not. Now that function is needed. All right, get moment of inertia tensor. Principal moments, I get the eigenvalues of that moment of inertia tensor. Getting the rotational frequencies from that, doing a lot of unit conversion work down there, returning those values. And then, rote, and then I'm doing an extra step where I'm rotating the molecule into a frame where the moment of inertia tensor is diagonal. That'll result in that unique orientation. And then sorting those values based off of uh, the z, y, and x axes, making sure that um, they fall in sorted order according to um, the rank that I've got there. I believe with z being less than x being less than y. Okay, so what else do we have? Molecular type. Um, comparing comparing values, whether A, B, and C are the same or not, classifying them as monotonic, linear, spherical top, symmetric top, or asymmetric. And then my main block is has all of its functions from before, uh, getting the principal moments, molecule type, and rotational constants, and then printing out all of those values and getting the final geometry, which is uh, rotated to uh, the diagonal coordinates for the moment of inertia tensor. Okay, so taking that value for dimethyl ether, printing out all the values we have from before, initial geometry, XYZ coordinates, finds eight bonds, 13 bond angles, six torsions, 24 out of planes. The center of mass, we translate to the center of mass. Then we do the moment of inertia tensor, we're almost diagonal, but we have to do a little bit more rotating down there. We see some off diagonal components. Uh, we get those rotational constants in AMU angstrom squared, determine that it's an asymmetric top because none of these values are the same. Convert those to megahertz, 10 to the fourth ish and 10 to the third ish in megahertz. And then in wave numbers, they're about one or 0.3 wave numbers in those cases. And then this geometry aligned to the principal moment. In this case, since it is asymmetric top, this is a unique orientation where we've removed the redundancy from the x, y, z coordinates, the translations going away because we went to the center of mass, and the rotations going away because we have translated to a frame in which the moment of inertia tensor is diagonal. So this program is now complete. It now does this for any of the individual uh, geometries that I've shown thus far and all the other ones checked into the GitHub. Uh, this and the other programs are, are in GitHub, as is a link uh, to this program. So check uh, the description for any of the parts that you'd like to follow along with.